And that's the essence of an archetype, because an archetype really is, you know, such an ancient part of us. It's something we all share. It's, it's like a huge big primal stream into which we can all dip and bring out things that are deeply meaningful to us personally, but also universal forms. And that, I think, really is the essence of the feminine. So I thought what I'd do is just maybe run through a few aspects of the archetype. Would that be interesting? You'll be able to see them come to life. Well, they, are, they, they have come to life, which is wonderful. So <clears throat> I suppose what I would like to start from is that the feminine is an aspect of universal energy. Really, I think in its broadest sense you could say that. This is the masculine is too, another aspect of universal energy. The feminine energy is seen to give shape, form and animation to all creation. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the term Shakti for instance, you know. Shakti is that primal shape-giving energy that drives evolution and many aspects of that energy are expressed uh, in creation myths. For instance, um, spinning, weaving, um, pottery, um, those, those, those would all be um, very ancient and archetypal forms of expressing um, the creative energy of the feminine would say that the feminine gives, just as the feminine gives birth to the individual, the feminine also, it's the feminine energy that creates galaxies and, you know, the stars on a cosmic scale, on a cosmic scale. And I think what you will find when you, as you've all found, uh, in drawing on, upon the archetypal depths of this energy, is that it's the same energy that links the minutest aspects of our personal existence uh, to the cosmic play, you know, that unfolds um, in the cycle of um, creation, destruction and recreation. So you could say that is the sort of fundamental template of the feminine energy. The feminine energy expresses that particular cycle which one finds in nature, of course, uh, on a cosmic le level. On the cosmic level, one finds it even in the sort of creation and destruction of whole galaxies and the birth of stars, for instance, which astronomy is bringing so close to us now. And, of course, on the individual level, the feminine cycle of birth, death, rebirth uh, is to be found even on the cellular level. You know, if you think even the cells are getting destroyed all the time and reforming all the time. And of course, nature's rhythms are all about that, aren't they? And the, the circadian rhythms that we talk about, the body clocks, for instance, which we have on a cellular level, on an organic level, um, and of course, on the levels of things like inhalation, exhalation, um, systole and diastole, um, the beating of a heart. All that is the rhythm of the feminine creative energy. So from all this you can see that the feminine energy is also deeply personal and physical. You know, it's very much linked to the pain of existence and to the daily struggle of existence. And I think that's something that really comes through in all this, that on the one hand it's linked so closely to cosmic creation and to creation generally and to giver of form and evolution and the whole unfolding of the life experiment. But on the other hand, it's also close to the daily struggle, the day-to-day, the minute-to-minute -day, -minute struggle, which we experience in our bodies, in our psyches, in our lives, in the world we live in. And I think that's something as well I can see in these wonderful paintings. But the other thing I see, which I've always thought to be a, but a huge aspect of the feminine, is you could say, okay, so there's this whole creative aspect of the feminine to the force cosmic creation, how does that happen? You know, what, what is the secret? What is the secret of that magic? And there again the feminine comes into its own because the secret of that magic is the creation of the secret space in which all this can happen. And I think that we, you all as artists, must be very familiar with that. It's a space into which one can withdraw 
into which in which i should say in which one belongs to oneself and not to anything or anybody else and esther harding who was a great jungian uh, described that space as the virginal space and she defined the virgin as she who belongs to herself and of course she was also at great pains to say that this doesn't apply only to women you know we are talking about an energy we are talking about a space that all creative people work from that kind of secret space is the alchemical vessel and you know in 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 uh, mythology right from ancient times um that particular space from which all creation comes has been expressed very much as the womb as the vessel um in in um, indian in uh, indian mythology it's called the hiryan garbh which means the golden womb it's the golden womb of creation out of which new things can be born and they can be born precisely because we have withdrawn from the very extroverted solar expansive principle so in that rhythm of expansion and withdrawal expansion and withdrawal the feminine gives us that retreat you know something that we can go back into where we can connect with the deepest aspects of our nature where we belong to ourselves and i think today i think people are finding that that is more necessary than ever before because everything pulls us out of ourselves doesn't it i mean the way we lead our lives the structure of um you know the daily the, the daily sort of business of living the structure of our lives incredible pressures uh, that are there now uh, at this sort of crossroads you could say a turning point where really the future of humanity hangs in balance basically that is more necessary than ever before because everything pulls us out of ourselves everything pulls us out of ourselves 